Well, surprise. I decided to go live. I was bored. Well, yeah, bored. I had nothing to do, so I thought I'd do a live stream. And we'll carry on doing repair I was doing the other day. Almost a week ago now. Little tinker with some stuff. And I've, I've got something which isn't a coffee this time. Don't forget to say hello in the chat if you're here. I'd like to know who's watching. So, say hello. I'd like to have a conversation with people in the chat. If you've not been here before, please jump in the chat and we'll have a chat. That's what it's for. Okay. Like I said, we will play around with some stuff. I've got this um, project I've been working on for the past week, I suppose. I'm trying to repair this thing and I'd like to try and make some more progress on it. And hopefully your thing's behaving okay. I have audio, that's good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't normally stream at this time of day. I normally stream at a very different time. So, and it's also, I, I decided 10 minutes ago, I thought I'll do a live stream. Um, so it's all a bit, um, yeah, unplanned. But I will show you what I've got over here. My messy desk over there. Some stuff I want to work on. So, if I zoom a bit, you can see there's a piece of desk here there, which is in bits. I've been trying to repair that for a little bit. And it's been driving me nuts, I have to say. I've not been able to track down what's wrong with it yet. I will find out what's wrong with it. Maybe I'll find out today when I'm doing the live stream. But so far, it's been, uh, it's been challenging. So, like I said, when you're here, Say hello in the chat. I don't see any live chat right now. Either the chat's not working or no one's saying anything. Always make sure as well you click on the live chat, not the top chat thing. That way you get to see it as it happens rather than what YouTube thinks is a popular message. I don't know, I don't know why. So I expect to get a different audience this time of day. I expect so anyway. Darren Bird, how's it going? 22 degrees C, that's not bad. Currently it is uh, 18 here outside. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. I'm in New Zealand, in case you don't know. Yeah, so I've got the air conditioning on. I've had it on all day. It's just comfortable. So yeah, makes it a bit lighter. But uh, so yeah, I've been looking at this piece of gear I've been working on this week and trying to get some progress out of it, and it's been frustrating. Um, everything I've tried hasn't worked so far, so trying to uh, figure out what's going on, it's been interesting. Yeah. So I thought I'd sit down, do a live stream, tinker with it some more, see if I get lucky. Um, and let's see how it goes. But uh, yeah, we'll see if it happens. But it's been driving me nuts. I've got a few different versions of the manual. I've got a physical manual and I've got some electronic ones. And one of the electronic ones, which actually is for this version of the unit I've got, it doesn't have any circuit diagrams in it. So that's the one I really want to see. But uh, it's only got the um, operator manual section and like theory operation and stuff and pass list doesn't actually have diagrams in that newer version one which is what I really wanted but uh, we don't have that so I think it didn't really change much anyway I mean I found a few variations between my unit and the physical manual I've got I found a few different things there which have been obviously upgrades over the years and I found the 1969 version of manual actually had those additions in it anyway ones I've found so far at least. So, and YouTube's notifying me about I'm going live. Yeah, I know I've gone live. <laughs> Helpful. Hope it tells everybody else. Anyway, right, close it off again. East Power Engineering. Oh there. Kenya, really? Okay. 
I think I've had Kenyans, not knowingly anyway, um, joining in before. I guess it's to do with different time zones and stuff. Because I say I don't normally stream at this time of day. I normally stream at a different time. Normally in about ten hours times so where I normally stream. So uh, yeah, I thought this something a bit different. But yeah. So what's what's the weather like over there in Kenya then? Apart from probably hot. <laughs> it's probably a an assumption there. Anyway, so let me just get this manual out. Let's just get this electronic manual on screen. Get it already. Like I said, this wasn't a particularly well. I wasn't planning on doing a live stream, but I just decided to do an impromptu one for that. There's still a live stream. Uh, let's get this over here. Uh, it's almost midday there. Okay. Let's look at the top screen. Here we go. So this is the electronic manual I've got, which is the 1969 version. And my unit's a 1972, I think it was. So it's still a little bit older. And this is the board I'm looking at. So this is the sampling probe. So make sure I'm going to zoom in the right piece. To make sure I'm clicking the right window, or things don't quite go. Um, so that's sampling probe there, which I thought might be bad. That is, I think, okay. I actually pulled the probe apart and tested it, and it seemed to be fine. I don't know. My camera's slightly off. Right. Couldn't fault anything in there. Tested diodes, the FET, everything. Um, couldn't fault it. That probe seemed fine. So I don't think the probe is the problem. So now I'm sort of looking at the next page. This is like a power supply for the balancing of the probe. I've checked all that. That's all working fine. And this is part of the confusion I'm getting as well. If I show the waveforms, which aren't a very good example on this manual. You can't really see it too well. There's actually two waveforms here. I'm showing this old scope. This is a, an old analog scope CRT screen. So it's actually showing two waveforms simultaneously. So it's got a waveform on the top here. And it's also got a waveform on the bottom. All right? So it's like a teardrop shape. And it's basically it's doing two sweeps. So it's got, it picks up two waveforms from a sampling it's doing. And um, that is not what I'm getting. <laughs> and I've also got another example here, a similar sort of things, two waveforms here, one goes down, one goes slightly higher, mirror image kind of thing. I also don't have that, I'm only getting one of those waves. These two pulses here, which are really hard to see, it sort of drops down like this and comes back up, and this one you can see the opposite way around. They're both correct. And these waveforms here, you can see these ones more clearly at least, there's two of them, it actually comes up here, there's a little spike here like that. And this one comes down like that, opposing, all right? Mirror image again in horizontal form. And um, those also I'm not getting. So this is a bit confusing because, at the very least, the one waveform I should be able to see is the first one. And that is from the output of this probe right here. Okay, it comes from this line here. If I go down to the next page. It's the pro feed in here, and this is where that sample waveform should be, right here. Okay, so it's being a bit of a pain trying to figure out what's going on because what I'm seeing in my testing isn't matching up what's in the manual. Now, either there is a fundamental problem there which I haven't detected yet, which is causing a difference in the waveforms, or the manual's wrong. <laughs> I'm actually put a post on the EV blog forum hoping to find someone which has got one of these units which is willing to scope it and to see if this gives the same waveform I'm getting or whether they get the one same manual. We shall see I suppose. Um, but I've been testing all the circuitry here. I've tested these voltages. Um, all these voltages check out in this section. Now what's currently doing is it's got a um, full scale reading on that unit. So actually I'm going to power it up so I can show you that. So if you haven't seen this 
in the last live stream I did, then you'll see what's going on. Let's, let's quickly power it up. Let's change to uh, a view. Get some lights going. Zoom in a lot. You still can't really see it on that camera. Let's change cameras. Let's go to my recording camera. We'll use that as a basis for you because that's much better to see on. If we boot up, then I'll switch over. Here we go. This will be much easier to see. So, more lights. So you see there, the needle is sitting at full scale. All right. <clears throat> so if I turn it off, this needle drops over. I'll turn it back on again. It bumps up a little bit, comes down, then goes up to full scale. All right. So the needle is moving fine. When I first did the looks at this thing last week, the needle was actually sticking, and that sticking problem's gone away now. It hasn't done it again since. So that's good. But I've got this full scale thing. Now that shouldn't really be there. This is the probe. And I've had this apart. There's a couple of little grub screws in here. Take those out. And you can slide the barrel off the probe. I've recorded a video about this. So I'll be doing this as a proper video as well later on. And showing all that. And trying to go through my process of diagnosing what's going on with this thing. And um, I can't afford the probe. So in here it's got this little calibration point in here. Which if... If you haven't seen this before, like I say, that plugs in there, and you push this in, that does a calibration signal, right? So that generates one volt at, I think it's one megahertz or something like it's supposed to be, maybe less, I'm not sure, but um, one volt certainly. So on a volt, one volt range, you should be getting a full scale reading. With it out, that shorten the probe tips together, because it should be shorten the probe tip together, we should generate a zero, should be nil down this end. And right now, it doesn't matter what range I'm on, doesn't matter at all it's always full scale and that's the current problem now last week I cleaned all these switches because these switches were playing up it was working better before I cleaned the switches interestingly but it would only get about maybe half scale with that one volt input it'd only be up here somewhere be about halfway up or something like that and when I cleaned all the switches that problem in a way I was getting full scale in but I'm getting full scale all the time and I've done things, done things like pulled the boards out, cleaned the edge board, uh, board edge connectors, that sort of stuff. Tested every single component on, on both boards. It's got two boards in here. Tested every transistor, every diode, every capacitor. I haven't tested resistors because they're a bit more, well, there's a lot of them in here. And they're harder to test because it being in circuit, you could get all sorts of nonsense readings anyway. You can still get some kind of ballpark idea, but it's not always best. Up to 29 degrees Celsius, eh? Oh, you're doing mobile work, eh? You're mobile, doing 2G only. Wow. Yeah, that would be a bit of a hard thing to do with 2G for mobile. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Haven't seen you for a little while, have I, Dave? Haven't noticed you anyway. Mind you, I haven't done any live streams in a while. Yeah, so that's the problem I've got right now, is that it's doing that with the basically full scale, regardless of what I'm doing. Even if I unplug the probe, I'm getting full scale. And that is coming back to this whole thing up here with that input here. So I've been doing things like trying to drag this input up and down, because it's actually sitting outside of this range. It says minus 3 to minus 7 volts DC. You probably can't see it too well if you've got a small screen. I'm in Auckland. Daniel. Oh, Danny Verk? No. <laughs> Hence, you're asking, Dave's in Danny Verk, I'm in Auckland. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's minus 3 to minus 7 volts DC. I'm getting about minus 11 volts. Yeah, happy new, Dave. Um, and it's got this current source, I suppose, the current source. That's what this is doing. It's trying to drag current. So it's putting current through here to put it to this minus 12 sort of volts. And it should be in this range, depending on 
what the probe is configured as at the time. Oh, you're looking as well, Daniel. Okay. Um, so I'm not getting that. I'm getting a slightly lower voltage. I mean, it's not necessarily dragging down. Okay, so there's one slightly different size getting there. But in here, this is all the switches. Well, part of the switch bank is, is a few sections to it. And this is basically a uh, divider, voltage divider network, which is the attenuator. So when you're doing the 0 0.01 volt range, it's basically going through that resistor there only and down and back up to here. So it's basically in series with these transistors. Okay. We're dropping in three minutes. No worries. Thanks for dropping by anyway. And so, like I said, I've gone through these voltages through here, and these are all right. And I've been trying different things, trying to get it some kind of reaction out of it. So, I go into the next page. Obviously, the sections or broken into sections in this particular diagram. And I'm following it right through, right through to here. Um, this is adjusted here. Now, if I turn this R19 all the way in one direction, on the I think it's a 0.03 volt scale. I could then get a needle to drop down to about half ray, but only on that one range. If I turn that adjustment all the way one way, and this is affecting the biasing and this transistor here between plus 15 volts and this negative feedback system through here stabilizes the amplifier but it's a negative feedback gives a negative voltage back which goes back to the probe so goes j4 here and back off again let's go back up here so j4 is coming down to the switch bank as well and it comes in over here to this switch bank here and it comes through here to the probe. I keep wanting to drag the page. <laughs> and it comes in through here, negative feedback. So this, this line here comes through and it affects the gate of the FET, which is a sensing FET, which does all the switching. So that's what negative feedback is doing. It's coming back up here. And that negative feedback seems excessive. That could be causing problems, but I've been trying to manipulate that and I haven't had it change anything. So that probably isn't the problem. So there is some interesting readings around this area though. So the waveforms I was getting at 0.3 and 0.4, those are the only ones which were correct. The pulses from these two diodes here. Basically, the signal comes in through here, through this transformer which is being pulsed. That generates a positive negative version of that waveform, I suppose. But they're inversely connected to this one, to this FET. So it's confusing, but yeah. Those pulses are correct. The voltage here is correct. The voltage here is not. That's about right. That's a bit bigger. Again. Come on. A bit bigger. Come on. And the voltage in this area is just off. So this is the only bit I found which isn't quite right. Now, when I f the very first test I did on this thing was hook up to the sample hold output with my scope and see what the pulses were coming out. Because it's supposed to be a positive pulse, negative pulse. right? It's supposed to what you see because it's doing sampling. And it should basically give you a down-sampled version of the original waveform of sorts. Um, and I'm only seeing a positive pulse. I've never seen any negative pulses, which isn't right. Now, it's exactly the same thing I'm seeing at the very beginning on that very first transistor as well, basically. I'm only seeing a pulse in one direction, not both directions. Because it's sampling an AC waveform. When it takes a sample, we see the you know, the AC waveform could be going up or it could be coming down. It depends on when it takes a sample. And so that's why it's, it should be a combination of positive and negative pulses. But so far, I've only seen pulses in one direction. Anyway, so that's that sample point, which I know is wrong. 
Um, let's just drag this slightly wider. Okay, makes it a bit less scrolling around. So this also outputs here. This goes to the metering circuit. So that's the next section. It's broken into two pieces. You've got the sampling section, then you've got a metering section, which has some conversation networks and stuff like that as well. So obviously the metering section is working, but what I'm seeing at this point is wrong. So I think the problem's in this section of the circuit. Ripple on the supply lines? No. Um, I did check that last week, and it seemed fine at the time. I checked all the capacitors, and all the caps look fine. Um, I could recheck it. Now it's had a bit of soak time. It could have changed, but I could recheck it. I mean, I fire a scope up and probe the power supply lines. Not exactly an issue. I did it with the multimeter last time, and it didn't show anything of note. It is hardly anything, like a millivolt or something. So it was really low anyway. Um, so with these voltages, say test point five is way off, test point six, which is this line here, basically, is way off. Now this is where the sampling tape gets taken off and goes back to that stabilizing amplifier, which is out of whack in itself. So these voltages down here. Uh, which one? Has this one got an old voltage? One of these had a bad UART voltage in it. Is it on this diagram or is it a different one? It was one of these had she had a mistake in the diagrams. I might be in this one, be, it's in the printed one I've got on my desk. I should, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what it is actually, it's in the next one up. In here somewhere it had two transistors linking together yeah this is it this one here so it's got the collector from this transistor going to the base of this transistor and it said it was something like 5.6 volts or something it's like well there's no way and that's not what i was getting i was getting 0. 0.6 because you go into a base of a transistor which is ground referenced so there's no way that's going to be five volts and that's what is on the diagram and i found that this diagram which is the electronic version Printed one's got the error on it. The electronic one is updated. It's slightly newer, about three years new, I think. And this has got the correction on it, which says 0.6 volts. <laughs> so I was looking at it thinking, what the hell? Anyway, so yes, there are mistakes in diagrams. Uh, right, I might zoom in too much, making it a bit hard to follow, maybe. So. In this section, I'm getting some interesting voltages. The minus 7 is correct. The minus 5.6 is correct. The minus 6.2 is correct. There's nothing marked here, but when you follow this down, you've got a resistor, and you've got this little feedback circuitry here. And it goes into here, and it says plus 0 0.05 volts. I am not getting that. I'm getting minus 6.5 or so. I can influence it and it can change it around quite a bit, but I can't get that. Um, and it's got these back to back capacitors here, which means this is AC sampling through here. That's what a back to back. So this is the amplifier section, and it's got this mirrors here, so it'll sample hold zero. I've tried changing that, it has a minimal effect. It does affect it very slightly, but I'm on that um, 0 0.03 volt range and um, have a meter reading I can see instead of being off scale, then I'm getting that sample hold zero. I can adjust it very slightly, it moves the needle just a little bit, but it's almost insignificant. Um, that point, well, minus 0.5 volts is correct. This 13.8 volts is ish it's close it's not actually that i'm getting the 14.5 here i think i was getting about that there um because it's got a plus 50 volt row here so these voltages all check out i think that those were okay if i remember rightly that was all right and the upper voltage here is way off like it's like minus 11 volts or so i was saying before because it is minus 15 volt rail down here right which is acting as a pull down so I pull down through this 150k. 
So this stuff should be trying to pull it up a little bit, and that's pulling it down. But the voltage here is way out of whack. Um, yeah. So when I was doing those voltage checks, I was using my multimeter. I haven't scoped this section yet. I've scoped some other stuff. Haven't scoped this. So I was going to do that as well and try and see what we get there. I mean, it should be, because you've got these back-to-back -back capacitors, there should be an AC waveform there, right? Or pulses or something there with the DC biases. 40 something up north, eh? Cool. The weather, nice weather tends to be. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But like I said, at this point here, this point 0.5, point 0.6, the waveforms I was getting here were not the complete waveform. So, yeah, I'm... I'm kind of looking at this section right now as being potential trouble area. Mainly because this voltage here is so far out of whack. Right. This circuit seems to be working correctly, but that voltage there is wrong. And I follow that back. And the voltages up here are just not quite what I thought they should be. So I've got this minus 0.3 volts DC I was saying up here. That wasn't that that was much lower if I'm rightly I think it was about minus six very similar to this or minus five or something 5.4 was it maybe kind of a, um, so that is very different now interestingly you've got a um, well the fit is certainly possible you've got the R28 sitting right there that is a factory selected value so they actually choose that to adjust for the probe So, that's something I haven't looked at yet to see what's actually there. The interesting thing is, this unit is, I think it's 1972, I think the date was on it. But the circuit boards inside it are newer than that. So it's almost like the circuit boards have been upgraded and replaced. Because they're newer. They're definitely not that age, they're, they're newer than that, like 10 years newer. So they've been replaced. Now, if that's still got the original probe on there, does that mean the resistor is wrong or is it even missing? I haven't even looked yet. So that's how I'm looked at yet. It could be that this is biasing this FET incorrectly, which is causing a, a, a cascading issue with voltages in this area. Could be. But... You know, it's not actually that much to this circuit. It's just a bunch of transistors in a serious, serious chain, basically. But it's driving me nuts trying to um, pinpoint what's going on with it. It shouldn't be as complicated as it is. But it's nice there's voltage readings on here. And I've been verifying that what I'm getting is, in most cases, exactly right. Now, part of the problem I've got is the... Um, is because I've got a full scale reading on that meter all the time. These voltages, I haven't seen it mentioned in the manual, but maybe it is in there somewhere, and I just haven't seen it. I think they're referencing having the calibration act, uh, point active. So it's getting the one volt RMS going into the probe. So if I have that turned on or off, it makes no difference to the meter reading or onto the voltages I'm reading on the unit. So it doesn't matter if I've got the signal on or off, voltages stay the same, which is interesting. Apart from that 0 0.03 volt range where I can then get the meter to pop up when I turn the calibrator on. So that's another little clue there which I haven't quite figured out the meaning for yet. Yeah, well, Dave, I see. The thing I'm trying to sort of figure out is what's going on here. Because say this voltage here is slightly up. So that's the probe in here. 
Let's look at the pro section again. I'll explain a bit how it works based on what little knowledge I've got about how it works. So there's a the probe tip. It comes in. You've got a diode bridge here, and you have a a bridge network basically. So you've got the zero volts here, a DC signal here, which is actually pulsed. So pulse signal comes in. That sends in pulses. And then you've got some transformers, which is actually just little ferrites with some loops of wire around it. And there are some actual inductors in there as well, which just wound tiny little bits of wire inside the probe. So these are balancing this bridge. So then you get this feedback signal here, which comes into the gate. Then you get the signal from the probe, which comes through these diodes, which is influenced because of these inductors and the collapsing of the, the, the uh, fields when it pulses and what have you. Comes back to the gate, which then triggers this fit. So this FET is what puts out the pulses into the input. Now the interesting thing is the feed for this FET. So you've got the source there, which goes back as the input with these capacitors and stuff like that. One thing I did think of is maybe there's an earthing problem. And so this earth wasn't connected. And so all these capacitors are effectively linked together with no grounding, which could have been causing a bypassing through the system. But I've already ruled it out. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was like, oh, it could be Earth, could be Earth problem, you know, because it's got some little contacts inside the probe, which touch the probe body. Thinking, well, if they're not bent out enough, because they've got weak, no longer touching the probe body, it could mean it's not actually grounded, and so the, are, the capacitors are basically joining bits of circuitry together. Um, but it wasn't that. Anyway, the, the drain for that fit comes back down here. It comes down to 15 volt supply. Or thereabouts. All right, so it's got 15 volts one side, onto that drain. And so when this fits turned on and off, it's pulsing a 15 volt rail into the unit. Which confuses me slightly because the waveform that's given as an example has a positive and negative pulse. But that's AC referenced, right? It's using an AC reference waveform, not a DC reference waveform. So though we've only got a 15 volt supply going up here, which is being switched. It's 15 volt going less 15 volt and going more 15 volt kind of thing, you know. It could be sitting at 11 volts and jumping up to 13 or 11 volts dropping down to 9, and you have the same effect on the pulses. Um, yeah, I've seen the pulses. I've seen the pulses on it. I've checked that. Um, that is. Is this waveform here, which is not a great example of a picture. Um, I'm seeing this positive waveform here. That is what's on the input, that first transistor, which comes out to that probe, right? So I'm not getting the up and down pulse. I'm getting only the up pulse. And that's what's throwing me a bit. Again, well, how do I get a down pulse with only a 15 volt rail? But then I was realizing, realizing it's AC coupled. And so it's a change in voltage, not an absolute voltage. Um, and the sweeping stop thing, I mean I've tried that. I've all you do is a lot of jitter if you don't have the sweeping stop. So what it does it samples at a variable frequency. So it sweeps between 10 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz sample pulses, right? And so it's constantly sampling in a in a sweep. So the pulses are at different times. If you've got, say, a 15 kilohertz AC waveform going in, and you're trying to measure that voltage, if the thing was running at 15 kilohertz as well, you'd be getting a beat frequency, and it causes all kinds of issues with readings inaccuracies. So it's got a sweeping, so it gets a random sample across different points of the waveform. Assuming, of course, you've got a static waveform measuring. Um, and so that's why it's got sweeping in there. So it sweeps that frequency, so the sample rate is constantly changing. Unlike a scope where it's like a fixed sample rate and it's always exactly the same, so you get a repeatable waveform. This is intentionally breaking the waveform up. That's what it does. Um, but in a sweeping stop, this means it will sit at, I think it's 20 kilohertz it sits at. When you stop the sweeping, which is by um, shorting the ground of one of the transistors to ground, uh, shorting the well, what was, which was it? Um, it does say it want me somewhere? Collector of A three Q six, so Q six on the second board. You short that to ground, and it stops it sweeping and sits at twenty kilohertz. 
and doing that this means you get a stable um, reading it doesn't jump around anymore don't get a jitter but it um, that didn't affect these readings at all anyway so that's the pulse I'm getting at the input of that transistor um, but not both so being a, um, a digital scope I'm using not an old analog CRT scope you would expect to not get that waveform anyway because you would be only seeing the sample it grabs which is based on trigger point should be probably a positive side where, where, where it's set it could be could be the way but you'd get one of them not the other because you're only seeing that one sample so I actually tried bringing the time base right out so I'll see a hundred samples and they're all positive there's not a single negative pulse and um, just to rule it out completely, I'll turn on persistence on the scope, display persistence, which is an analog, analogous, analogous, I don't know, um, which is like an old CRT scope in that way. It, was, it will hold it onto the display a little bit as if it is a phosphor, which is glowing. So um, just to rule that out, and that was exactly the same, no difference, no negative pulses. So this is what's showing me a bit. Is that this shows a positive pulse, negative pulse, but I'm not getting that. So this is being a bit confusing because is this wrong? Is there something wrong with this, which means I'm only getting in one half of the pulse? Is it because the feedback circuitry isn't right? Um, these are the things I'm trying to figure out. I mean, if this stabilizing amplified feedback thing is not feeding back to that probe at the right levels, it could be unbalancing that bridge because it is a bridge, right? It has to be balanced. And part of it is, let's go back up here. We've got this biasing and balance adjustment here. Now I've actually tried adjusting these. If I adjust the balance all the way one way, I can pull the needle down. It helps, I can actually get that 0 0.0 volt or 0 0.03 volt range to show a reading. If I pull this all the way to one side, so it's biasing and unbalancing the bridge to one direction quite a bit. So that's probably a clue as well. Now I have measured the voltages here, and before I even adjusted any of these things, I was getting quite even voltages, about 10.1 volts or 10.3 volts or something like that, on each side, plus or minus you know 10 volts, and they're fairly well balanced as they were. They were pretty close together on these two connections. So one does negative 15 or well, negative 10. Now one do negative uh, positive 10, and pulling this all the way one way was helping to get the needle down but it obviously not right I think it's a set compensating for something and those come up here to this section where you've got this DC supply comes in with this pulse DC coming in through this speech network so yeah I mean I've tested the fit as better as, as well as I can in circuit and it didn't seem faulty I was getting a leakage between drain and source in both directions they were different in both directions so um, yeah it is I'm not 100% sure that fits okay I'm 90% sure that fits okay now the, the other fit in the circuit which is here that behaved exactly the same way I was getting exactly the same before behavior out of this fit as I was the one in the probe with that leakage in both directions across the drain, drain and source. Um, what if I inject voltage into the input to see if the other voltages are correct? Well I've tried injecting signals and checked for meter deflection when I was getting a lower reading on that 0 0.03 volt range and it wasn't changing anything really. Um, it, it, oh. Yeah, so I've tried unplugging the probe, so the probe's not even connected. And then I get, uh, let's go to this diagram here. So there's, this is disconnected here, so there's no probe connection. And then this voltage here went up, because obviously this transistor's pulling up because they're trying to generate current. So I see a 12 volts, or well, minus 12 volts here. I should have pulling down more, shouldn't I, while I'm pulling up. Um, and the other voltages here um, were the same. But with no pulses going through the circuitry so there's no signs of any signal going through impulses so that is as expected it went away when i unplugged the probe 
but I'm still getting media reading. So that's the interesting part, is that I can still get a full scale meter reading with no probe connected. Which is one of the first things I did to try and elim eliminate the probe as part of the problem. It could still be the problem, but I don't think it is, because if there's no pulses coming through, it shouldn't be amplifying the pulses because there's no pulse there. Now the first time I see a pulse when I've got the probe disconnected is in this section. So I'll be seeing a pulse here. At test point three and four in this section here onwards. I've seen pulses here, but not before it. Yeah, well, the meter is a, is the next section. So this is so this program is broken into two sections for simplicity, I suppose. I haven't looked properly at the second section yet. I've glanced at it. I haven't actually studied it yet because the first section seems to be wrong. So let's so say the sample hard, the sample hold output here was measuring. Incorrectly, I've seen pulses there which weren't right. So I haven't looked at the second section yet, which is what this goes to. So we go down to the second section. Zoom out slightly. So he's got various power supplies connections here. And this is where the signal comes in. All right, so it's got a detector. And this bit I haven't really looked at yet, to be honest. I haven't really studied this part much. Looked at it a little bit. I haven't done any testing in this section. Because the meter is working. It does move. It does behave seemingly correctly. But it looks like it's being driven when it shouldn't be. The zeroing, that does work. I've verified that's working. That's that control on the front panel for doing a meter zero. Again, this is part of the switch matrix. Maybe there's a problem with switches. I did do some checking. I couldn't find any problems. Switches appear to be working correctly. Um, so it's got a non-linear meter circuit section here, which is for, allowed for um, a skewing of the amplification ratio as the signal levels come up. So it's got a Built in conversation to, to level it back out again. Um, but yeah, I haven't done any testing really on this side apart from the zeroing and a switch. Uh, damping circuit as well, this is what just slows the meter movement down, makes it behave a bit slower. And there's some more switch networks here, which I've also tested. So I'll show that first bit on the first page, but we've got this section over here as well. And I can't fault these, they seem to be working correctly. Um, and there's the meter there. So you've got a meter zero here. This is something I'm also suspicious of being potentially a problem. Maybe there's an issue with this and it's skewed off so much it's, it's um, overthrowing the meter I suppose so it's giving too much gain for the meter and so the meter's sitting much more sensitive than it should be maybe it's something to do with this maybe this has gone wacky I haven't tested it ever yet so I haven't tested these under voltage checks on this section at all I've done mechanical stuff like the switches because before I cleaned the switches it was behaving better <laughs> but it wouldn't get a full scale reading it's only getting like half halfway up and it's a bit erratic, so I clean the switches with some deoxit, spray that in there because they're all open, and then that fixed that problem, and then it's reading way up. So maybe it's reading low, and someone's been in there twiddling pots before I got it, and they tried to adjust it, and it's messed it up. I don't know. Uh, the relay contact, yeah, that's um, that's a sample hold section. So what it does, it actually does sampling and holding. So when you push the button on the probe, it will actually hold that current level on the meter so you can, if it's a bit like a whole a max reading kind of thing so we have some, whatever well min max whatever it is when you're sampling you know you're actually using the probe to test some circuitry on it you can push that button it'll hold it on the meter then you can look away from what you're testing pull the probe out and then look at the meter and see what that reading was it's just a that's all that does that's what that relay does and that seems to be working fine because i've been doing that um 
and trying that button and it's been relaying as okay and contacts seem okay so I can't fault that part at least not that particular function of that part yeah so and it's my waveform service you can barely see this is all for the pulsing circuitry um, it's, it's, you can't really see it there but it's a triangle wave there a sawtooth in here and there's a pulse in there somewhere we can't really see it you know in the printing manual I've got you can see it a lot better hey worm how's it going yeah I thought I'd do an impromptu live stream working on that piece of gear I was working on the other day yeah so this is the A3 board it's the bottom board which is basically power supply stuff on the pulse and stuff like that on it um, triangle generator. I mean, this is obviously working because it's generating pulses. Pulse sizes are about correct, like the, the pulse lengths and the pulse times, so which I mentioned in the manual. Based on like the example waveforms are given, I'll set the scope up, scope up for that waveform sample, and it looks right. So, like the pulser stuff seems to be working fine. Pulse generator stuff. This is that coil, that relay, uh, relay the um, transformer. That's one part of the other part of that transformer is on that other diagram I showed where it starts to generate pulses, right? So when you're actually looking at that other circuit and tracing around with the scope, I could have nothing before it and then I get pulses as diodes and that's from that transformer there. That's just where it couples into the pulse generator. So this bit here is pulsing fine. Um, So that's the interesting thing. I'm not quite sure. I mean, is it a sort of case of the pulses are there, but maybe the pulses should be synchronized more in some way, and maybe it should only be looking at the pulses at a certain times on a meter circuit? I don't know. I haven't looked that far. But I'm sort of thrown by the way of some of these voltage I've measured haven't been what I expect them to be. At least based on the diagrams. So I haven't looked this deeply into it yet. Uh, yeah, so, so this is putting our pulses for a transformer, and that's coupling into that other diagram. And it puts out the pulses to the sampling probe here. So that's what goes to the probe and the clamp, which goes back to the second circuit. So you've got the clamp pulses here. But the pulses in the transformer, we've got the pulses in the probe. So that should synchronize them all together. They should all be at the same time. So when it's pulsed the probe, it should come through the circuitry, be handled by the other circuitry because it's getting the pulses all at the same time. And it's all synchronized. So from this section. So I don't know. <laughs> I I'm sure I'm missing something here somewhere. So that clamp pulsing is coming in here and turning on this transistor. Let's get this bigger. Right, so there's a clamping coming in here. That clamp pulse comes in, turns on this transistor, which shunts this to ground. So it does a ground reference pulse, so it knows where zero volts is. I mean, maybe that transistor's not working right. Uh, possibly. Haven't got that far. And I've measured every transistor, and I can't find any which are bad. So, at least nothing obviously bad. They'll pass the test, so. Bit of a mystery so far. And, um. So there's that transformer there which is putting the pulses, generating these pulses here and generating this pulsing to ground or shunting to ground I should say so I mean is it that the pulse is coming through and this should be nulling that pulse out? maybe but um, yeah, I don't know I've been working on this thing for days, off and on, you know, obviously not solidly for days. You know, when I've had some time, I've been sitting there for, you know, 
half an hour tinkering with it and just trying to see what ideas pop in the head. So what I was doing yesterday was basically um, loading down the circuitry with a resistive load. So I've got my little relay box there, relay box, resistor box. And I'll clip out the various parts of the circuitry and try to influence it to see if I can change the meter reading. And it seems to me that basically no matter what I do to any of the circuitry, I couldn't really get the meter reading to come down to zero or come down at all in most cases. Need a working book, meter so you can work, swap balls. Well, yeah, swap, ball swapping is the easy way of doing it. Because um, at least now is it down to which one. But there's only two balls, and the balls aren't that complicated. One ball is basically power supply and pulsar, and the other, the other one is all this stuff. Um, so, I actually thought this would be an easy repair. <laughs> and it's not been an easy repair. Yeah, most of the voltages are okay. There's been a couple which um, I found are out of whack. So as I was saying before, before you joined, in this stabilizing amplifier, which is a negative feedback, goes back to the probe and switches and stuff. This plus 0 0.05 volts DC, I'm not getting that. I'm getting about um, negative 6 volts, I think it was. But that does change depending on what the conditions are. So that's not like fixed in place. If I make, if I adjust this, was it that one there? No, this one up here somewhere. I adjusted something further on, wasn't it? Adjustments there, R19. If I adjusted that, that was having an influence on the voltage here, but not like this. Free spray. Well, yeah, that's an option. Let's see if I can shock something with the life. But it's like if I'm turned on from cold, right? So. It's not like it's something warming up and then playing up. It's just, yeah. The only thing is, before cleaning the switches, it's actually behaving better. But obviously that was masking a problem. The dirty switches was masking a problem. So, I can't fault the switches. I've shit to them. They seem to be switching correctly. There's nothing stuck. There's no, there's no faults with the switches I can find. So, uh yeah, and I could get the infrared camera out. I haven't tried doing that yet. I've been doing like trying to do a logical path for the circuit and just trying to find where things don't make sense. And this area kind of doesn't make sense. Maybe Q9 is bad. Maybe it is. I can check, certainly, if I stick the scope on here and see if this is pulsing negative like it's supposed to. Um. Oh, I've done voltage. Yeah, I've only done voltage measurements on this section. I haven't done a scope measurement on this section. So I shall get the scope set up and we'll have a look at that. Yeah, let's do that. option on. Now in front of me has got the printed manual just here which is an even earlier version this is 1966 or something. When I've got on the computer is 1969 so that's got some corrections in it which this has got errors on um, that I found. I found a couple of errors which are from obviously a previous version. Just waiting for the scope to start up and we'll have a look at this and see what we're getting here. So, so you want to look at Q9 And Q9 is third one down from here. So this one here is Q9. Let's get this meter set up. Now, so I can actually do is a overlay. What transistors are they? What do these look like? Just standard MPNs, I think. Um, I haven't actually looked at the parts list, to be honest. I mean, the parts have probably got HP codes on them. If anything, I 
Um, M5414 hyphen 094. So I think that's the HP number, is it? Another one's a uh, 071 or something. But it says EBC on the front. Let's just say image face better. So it does a two with penalties, which is quite nice. Anyway, so I'll probe one now. I'm going to see if I can get my screen capture set up and actually grab the scope view, shove it in the corner of the screen. Make it easy for you guys to see. Hey Peter, how's it going? Oh, got a text message. Let me quickly check this. Give me a second. Oh, it's the wife of the cat. The wife has got a cat. She's out visiting some friends. I'm going to have to show you this. My wife's got a cat. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get this um, screen sharing now. What the hell is the IP address? Um, Scope screen. Is that for the plan, eh? So let's do HMI with top screen and you can kind of see both there. I've already recorded heaps of video on this thing, so I'm not going to record anything unless I find anything to add to what I've already recorded. So the transistor we want to check is size Q9, which is this one here. This one here is the FET. So it's Q7, Q8, Q9. My cables all twisted, of course. They are. Right. So, I could just hook it on, it'd be easier. So, there's the pulse. So, you can see the sweeping going on there. All right, that jitter. It looks worse over the LAN with this screen sharing thing. It is much much faster than that obviously because it's going through the network it's a bit delayed right, so that's that jitter we get in there and as you can see it's only doing positive pulses and that's with the cow on turn the cow off oh, bad connection there at the same time I'm doing that so cow off cow on no difference All right makes no difference change ranges no obvious difference at all, all right Change zeroing, no difference. So if I go right up to the beginning here, so if I go to the base of Q2, which is the input from the probe, I've still got DC offset on this as well, so you can see the DC offset there. All right. And there's nothing there. Do I set the probe plugged in? Make sure I've got the probe plugged in. I haven't plugged it. No, I haven't plugged it. That's why I've got no pulses there. Let me just uh, plug that probe in. Okay, back to Q2 again. All right, so there's the pulses on Q2. And you can see it's only positive side. Let's go back to AC coupling.
Right, so there's that pulse we're getting. And bring the time base down, there's that jitter. And there's only positive going pulses, no negative going pulses, which was what's supposed to be showing. And the actual pulse shape looks about right. If I turn the calibrator on, you'll see it starts getting jittery. All right, so that shorted probe, that's with a one volt signal. And there's almost no difference. So, yes. It should be negative pulse as well. And if I put on a persistence display, persistence of one second, it's the same. Right? There's no negative pulses there at all. If I t Obviously with the persistence on it, it tends to make the rest of the display look a bit muddy. But, um, turn it back off again. All right. There's no negative pulses, and there should be negative pulses. So back to Q9. So, that's what we're looking at. Q9, there's that pulse, which is on the collector. Positive going pulse. So let's look at the base. We're also getting a positive going pulse as well and then the emitter is ground okay like it should be so I think I need to set up a second probe on this and have two probes connected at the same time and check the timing see if those pulses line up or not let's grab a second probe AC coupling, 10 times probe, okay, vertical is only 50 millivolts, let's drop it down a bit. And we shall hook this up to it as well, so hook up this to Hook up this to the collector. So what I might do is actually is turn this off for a second. Hook this up to the base. Turn it back on. And you can see here the pulses are at exactly the same time. That's a little bit interesting. So what that is supposed to be doing is turning that transistor on and should that be nulli that pulse out? Should that pulse be there? And that's on the um the pink waveform. That's the collector. Yeah, I've um, that just stops the sweeping, so it stops the jittering. So I'm not too worried about that part. It's I have tried it with that um, sweeping stopped, and I can do it. It's just putting a clip lead on. I just don't want to have it fall off whilst I'm working on it. Um, so if I come into here, so that pink waveform is on here, and the yellow waveform is on here. So that's a little bit interesting because with that being grounded, if that's going positive going, that should be shunting that, shouldn't it? 
that shouldn't be pulsing. Should that be trying to nullify that pulse? Is that what that's supposed to be doing? Let me change to um, DC on here. Oh, I can't see the half of the screen, it's over here. I'll do this with the computer as well, so I'm sitting and do it. That's still DC. Um, level. So I was going to compress the waveforms a bit there. I just want to check it, the offsets on DC as well at the same time. Yeah, okay. Let's move this up a bit. Drag it. Drag it. Come on, let me drag it. Really, I can't drag it? No, oh, I thought I'd drag it. Okay. This is a bit hard to see now. <laughs> um, actually, no, that's not what I want. Position. Not enough. Here we go. Trigger. Can I drag that down? Yeah, I can now. All right. So yeah, I'm wondering about this a little bit because I would have thought that. With that, because they're both negative offsets, so we've got negative offset on this side. That's negative offset. That's grounded. So being an MPN, that would have to be above ground. That to pulse above zero volts to be able to turn that transistor on, right? So we need to get at least 0.6 volt pulse on the input here. So we're getting 6.3 volts. But if that's a zero volt reference there, it's not actually getting above that, is it? So we're getting 6.3 volts um, IMS. The maximum is one, minus 1.1 volts. So that's actually not enough to turn that transistor on, is it? Because that's ground reference. It's still less than zero volts. It needs to be at least 0 0.6. Positive. Could that be the problem? It's not actually... Oh, lost the camera. Uh, <laughs> so it's, maybe that's the problem. It's actually not enough voltage here to turn that transistor on to shut that pulse out. So therefore it's always sending through a voltage because the pulse should only be there when it's an actual voltage, maybe. Could that be it? So if I try and bias this upwards to a higher voltage on the base, I could try that, try pulling it up in voltage and see if that transistor will turn on and see what happens. Let me check to see if this where that is connected to on the other circuit, see if it matters about me biasing it and pulling it up. Q8 short maybe. Um, I don't think so. I think the voltage has looked okay when I check that one. Hey Andy, Jonathan, yeah, just realised, new person. Um, and create possibly, I mean, I, I don't remember that being a problem when I was doing voltage checks. I was seeing different voltages at least, whether they were right, don't know, because there's no voltage mod for that one. These ones were 
right. Um, so let's come down to that. Where is that bit? I've lost the plot now. Where's the bit I'm looking for? This is still the AT board. I think it was the A3 board, wasn't it? It had the pulse and stuff on it. That's right. I'm looking at the wrong board. So here we are here. So we've got a resistor there. We've got a 1K resistor. So let's look at this circuit. Let's just um, get rid of that camera for a minute. So Andy, does that mean you've got one of these 3, 4, or 6 as well? So that's what's turning on that transistor, or should be turning on transistor. So a minus 15 volt row over here, and ground there. So how's that supposed to work? <laughs> the most it could go is ground. So there's no way it's going to pull that up to turn that transistor on, is it? That doesn't make sense. Because if this transistor here turned fully on, they'd be pulling it to zero volts, right? Obviously you've got capacitor here, so it's pulsing zero volts. The most, that's the most it could do. So how is that supposed to go above zero volts, turn the other transistor on? Is a bog diagram, simplified bog diagram, right? So this is trying to turn this. How's it going to turn on? That doesn't make sense. Now, where's it gone? Lost the pages. Yeah, so I don't understand how that's actually supposed to work. So it reckons it's doing a negative. Surely that 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 can't be an NPN then, can it? Surely that had to be a PNP. Surely, because NPN just wouldn't work in that situation. Because if it never goes above ground, it's never going to turn on. That's interesting. Let's get the transistor tester out.
Now I did do some tests on various parts of this unit and a lot of them just said they couldn't figure out what they were. That may be because they're germanium transistors. We can also check out the parts list and see what's going on there too. Anyway, let's see what it says first. No component detected. Well, that's helpful. Could be germanium. I've added a lot of that with these things in circuit. I can't test them. It just doesn't find a result. Let's check the parts listing out. What does it say it should be? Parts list Q9. See it somewhere? It says it's an MPN. Yeah, it says it's an MPN transistor. The equivalent is a 2N3646. Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? That is peculiar. That's an interesting, interesting discrepancy. Hey William, you're following, you're following along alright again. <laughs> so, anyone got any ideas how a MPN transistor is supposed to turn on in that situation? That just makes no sense. You says PNP. You says PNP. Mine says MPN. Let me check in this manual. Um, pass this in this one. Page. Uh, I don't know if I have to find it again. It's about, it's about there somewhere. Look at this one, Q9. This one says MPN as well. Oh, you look at the A3, right. Um, yeah. It just that this thing is just full of mysteries. <laughs> it's like never ending, never ending system of what the hell is going on now? Because <laughs> it just never seems to bloody end. It, it just the more I dig into it, the more questions come out of it. It's like I just like to get some questions answered, rather than having more questions to answer. <sighs> that doesn't make sense. Yeah, A3 is off this other bit here. This is the A2 board, so. Um, yeah, I'll come over here. Maybe. Up there. Yeah. Part of the A2 board. 66501 version. Yeah, I don't know. It's, this just makes no sense to me now. Just. What is that transistor doing? It's doing nothing. <laughs> a test sheet for new HP text. Well, maybe I don't know. 
mean, surely it has to be a PMP. It can't be an NPN. Um, yes, I can double check the physical connection, actually. That's easy enough to check. Emitter is indeed tied to the ground. It is not the other way around. The emitter is tied to the ground. I mean, if it was the other way around, that could have potentially worked, but it's not. <laughs> Wait for my Cat 5. No, it is not. Um, let me pull the thing up and I'll show you. Uh, waveforms. Well, you've got the you got a diagram there. It's probably as bad as this one, isn't it? So, waveform 5. 3 and 4 I'm getting correctly, which is the diodes. Waveform 5, I'm not really getting this. All right, so I think in this one I will actually stop the sweep because stopping the sweep did help for these ones. Um, I will we'll stop that sweep. Let me do that. Grab a clip lead. I'll change camera view and stuff in a minute, probably. So you can see, doing, so you can see the uh, scope. Um, which bloody wire was it? I don't remember which, which connections it was now. I don't actually remember. Oh, bloody thing just swung shot on me. All right. Who knows? Maybe fix it. <laughs> Turn it on. No, I didn't fix it. That's a shame. That'd be nice. All right. So need to find out where these connections are. I'll change camera views in a second. From there, and I could try and find where the other point was. I had to go around, ground to. There, I think it was there I had to go to. Yep, alright. I'll stop the sweep, then I'll change the camera views and stuff so you can see what I'm doing. Put that out to there. Hook this somewhere. Hope your clip doesn't fall off. Alright. That should stop the sweeping. Alright, let's change camera view so you can see what the hell I'm doing. Leave on top screen. Let's pull this up. Yeah, okay. Cock. So that's what we should be getting. With only one um, trace as well, not two traces. It's only one channel running. So we'll get the trace here set up. Let's take the second probe off for now. And hook this up to. Where's the hook this up to? I've forgotten. I've got distracted now. <laughs> and I've closed the book in front of me. Uh, A2Q8. So, clit or Q8, which is this one. And I want some different settings on this.
No, it's the state fight, remember the votes. And one microsecond of division. I'll say two. And I'm an IC coupling. No, I'm not. I'm on DC coupling still. AC coupling. Let's bring it down to the middle. Right, let's see what we get. Sweeping is stopped. Well, that's interesting. Now, with the calibrate button released, so it's to shorten the probe, we're getting that. So I will go to one millisecond and 200 millivolts and we'll bring it down a little bit. Okay, so comparing that with what's on the screen, yeah, nah. I might not have been right at this point. I might be on the wrong leg on that transistor. Hello from Sweden. Well done. Um, working on HP 3406A. Trying to diagnose why it's misbehaving. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. And I'll show you why that's interesting. So we're getting these junky waveforms here. So maybe now it is right. I'm trying to get triggering mostly persistence after all. But here we are getting two waveforms. Potentially anyway. One second persistence and try and get triggering better. Yeah, that's with the calibration on. Very, very noisy. Let's turn my systems back off again. But that's interesting, right? Because that isn't really what's on the screen, is it? It's no, <laughs> but what I'm going to show you is why it's got interesting. We no longer have a four meter deflection unless I pull the cow button, that is back to how it was before. Now it wasn't doing that. When I banged it, right? When I dropped it, it's still, it was still doing it. Let's unhook this. It's still the same. So when it's not sweeping, if I if I unhook this, that starts to sweeping again. It should do anyway. I assume it hasn't fallen off. And it's still on there. Oh, that's interesting. The calibration is now working. All I did is hook up to that and drop it, but dropping it didn't fix it. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, what the hell? Go to that one, which I think is the base. I'll change this back to the other view again. I don't have a shortcut on there. I thought I had a shortcut on my keypad. No one. No one of that. Back to this one. Yeah, that one. Where's that one? That one there. 
suppose. It's not like a copper, is it? No. Um, so that's the base. So it should be minus 6.2 volts DC there, but on IC coupling right now. So I'm confused by that now because now it's behaving better. DC coupling. IMS is 5 volts. And it should be 6.2, or well, negative 6.2 there on the base. So that's different. Well, mind you, I haven't got a calibrate turned on. Let's turn the calibrate back on. I'm on Q9. Hold on. I'm on special Q8, aren't I? Yeah. I'm on the wrong transistor. That's Q7. That's Q8, Q9. I should be on this transistor. This is what the waveform looks completely wrong. I bet you that's what it is. Go the other way, it probably makes more sense. Okay, back to DC coupling. If I put it on the right place, it does make a big difference, doesn't it? Do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that time base are weird. Yeah, okay. Got delay there. Right. So there's that waveform there, right. And there are two of them. You can see them both there. There you go, do that. It still doesn't match what we've got on screen as a sample waveform. Um, unless I'm on the wrong bloody leg, could be. No. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the things I was getting, which is just a bit weird. If I start sweeping again, it gets really jittery. Stop the sweep, settles down a little bit. So it is a bit different to what's in the manual here. So let's look at test point number six, all right? Which is the emitter of Q10. Which I think is this one here. Turn the persistence back off again for now. See, that is looking right now. Before, I wasn't getting these. I'll turn that off, we should get nothing. That's right, this is actually working now. That is interesting. So, it looks like it's fixed itself. Somehow. <laughs> right, so we're getting kind of away from, away from there is correct, but away from a 5 isn't quite right. So let's just look at the actual thing to see if it's going to work. I'll take the uh, sweep off. Yeah, see, so that's 
pre running and it has locked again. So, I don't know, this, this is weird. Very, very strange. That is not what I was be expecting. Just trying something here. Okay, well, why did it fix itself? The only thing I did differently, because it was still pegging the needle, doing full scale, when I dropped this ball down right into the housing, like where the, the thing, thing hinged down prematurely <laughs> and went down a bit quicker than I wanted. And then I shunted this thing to ground to stop the sweeping. And after then it's worked. So if I have unshunted it right now and turn the calibration off, turn it off, turn it back on again, it's behaving. Put the calibration back on, that's working. Unplug the probe, that's working. Okay, well, I don't know what was going on there, but now it's working properly. Somehow I fixed it, I don't know how. Uh, all I've done is shunt it. I don't know, that's weird. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> what fixed it? I mean, right now that is working correctly. It's what did that? What fixed it? You found a service window that's upside down. Yeah, there is one that's upside down. Yeah, um, there's two versions out there. One's upside down. One isn't. The one which isn't um, is off the XDev site, but you need a a password you need to log in now to get the access to those files they've um Ilya's locked it down so i think he's having some kind of problem with the system or something people may be abusing it i'm not sure but he's locked it down there so yeah it's in order to get into the documents on the xdev site you have to have a login to it so um and that's the same manual i've got here which is this one here I don't know what oh, something something changed it. Could have been the bang. It could have easily have been that ball banging down. Because I don't think you guys saw it on camera, did you? Did you actually see what happened? I'm not sure. Um, manual shows it as, yeah, some of these, um, scope definitions in the manual, I, I think they're wrong. There's a couple there where they're, I've got exactly the right waveform, but it didn't match on the, um, divisions on the actual scaling and stuff like that. I've already done deoxidating the buttons, did that on the switches, deoxid it. What I should do whilst it's working is move the probe to the input, that first transistor, and see if that's doing two pulses now. That would be interesting to see if that's the case now. So previously this was not doing two pulses. Now it is. Now we're getting the right waveform. Unbelievable. Right, so that's the waveform we're supposed to be getting. That's right. That is exactly right. What changed? <laughs> oh, I don't like this.
Right, so the way from getting here, now I know what it's supposed to be. Let me quickly record some video on this. Right, I'm debugging this thing. And I've got doing a live stream right now. I thought I'd do an impromptu live stream. And I'm just playing around with it. Trying to just dig into it a bit deeper, trying to figure out what's going on. And it wasn't working correctly. I was demonstrating it on stream. Did some voltage checks and stuff like that and scope probes. And I was trying to look at some waveforms, which is these ones over here. Those ones there, trying to demonstrate those. And it started working. All I actually did is I shunted out the sweeping, so I stopped sweeping. And also, when I had the board up, look at this, had the board up, I just lifted up, it dropped like that. That's the other thing that happened. <laughs> and since then, it's worked. I've been working on this thing for three days, off and on, trying to figure out what's going on with it. And now, it is working. I don't know why. And the waveform on the scope is correct. So the waveform you see there, the top one, is what we get in there. Uh, that's correct, and it's doing exactly the right thing because it's taking samples of a waveform, which is the calibrator input, and it will be taking samples at different points because it's random sample, and when it does that, it will be getting different points on the waveform, on the AC waveform, so it'll be getting different levels, different amplitudes um, across the waveform, both positive and negative going, which is why the waveform looks like that. That is perfectly correct, which is a, what I was expecting to see when I first started troubleshooting this thing, but that was not what I was getting. Why is it now working? What changed? What's different? <laughs> I've been working on this for ages, right? I'm trying all different things. So that's that test point there on the input of Q2. Let me look at the feedback circuitry because I know what I was getting there. I was getting about 11 volts here before or something. Neg negative 11 volts. Let me quickly look at that. Um, actually, this is the base of Q2, yeah. So the base of Q2, I was actually getting that. Let me put it back on back on there and it's through DC coupling let's worry about that part so we're getting now about negative 5 volts or so 4 to 5 volts which is what it says in the manual should be minus 3 to minus 7 that's exactly right and if I turn the waveform off, that's what we're getting there. Minus 4.8. Or 4.6. 4.6 RMS. Which is perfect. So the feedback is better. The feedback is working. So the feedback signal changed. We're now getting the correct stuff on the probe. But I don't know what's actually changed overall. I don't know what caused it to work. And that's frustrating. Uh, what the hell? Turn it off again. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, something made it start working. And it seemed to be tied to either me dropping the board, possible, or me tying this resistor here. This is a sweep resistor. There, right? Oh, you can't see what I'm doing because the camera's gone off. Because it's great like that sometimes. Oh, you can see. All right, okay. All right, well, I just can't see it on the monitor. <laughs> Yeah, I'll demonstrate it again. So in here, there's a resistor, this is the A3 board. That resistor just there 
goes to the transistor here. All right, and that's why we shunt to ground to stop it sweeping. Now, so I'm, I've noticed I've got to be careful about this. This is really loose, this bracket, and it's really close to breaking. It's, yeah, that's very fragile. That I keep picking up by it, and it keeps on bending a little bit, getting worse and worse. All right, let's turn it back on. It's been off for what, 30 seconds now? Calibrate. Turn the calibrate off. Working. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> I don't like it. I don't know what's actually happened. And I don't actually know what's caused it. That's the thing I don't like. On one thing, it's fixed. Well, it's probably fixed. Yeah. That is weird. There could be a bad connection now. When I pulled the probe apart, one thing I did find is that there's actually a resistor in there inside the probe. Um, I'll show the diagram so I'll point out what the bit I'm talking about. Uh, here it is. Top screen. So this is the probe diagram. And this is all tiny stuff, right? It's, it's all really small parts and crammed into the actual handpiece. This resistor here, R1, that end of the resistor was not soldered to the circuit board. It was through the through hole, no solder on it. <laughs> I thought, ah, oh, I found a problem. That could be it. It's causing a biasing issue at the front end, right? Uh, no, it wasn't that. I soldered it in and it didn't fix it. So, it wasn't that. Put it back together and the thought will come back. Yeah, yeah. So, I did actually find a problem, but it wasn't that. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Um... So what other, I want to check these other voltages of these things which I found before which were out of whack, right? So let's check these sections here. We've got this 0 0.05 here, which was out of whack before. And these ones up here. I want to see what we're getting here now on the multimeter, not on the scope. Because the multimeter is what I measured them with before, right? So I want to do like for like testing. And see if they make sense to the diagram now. Because that might be give me a clue about where the fault is. And you can't see much until I do. No, let's do that. I can kind of see, can't you? Shut the probe in the side here because that is a ground point. Good enough. So I want, uh, is that 14, 13, 10, 11. 0.5 volts, that is the emitter. 13.8 volts, that is the collector. And 0 0.07 volts is the base. And it, the diagram says 0 0.06. That is correct now. Oh, sorry, sorry, the diagram says 0 0.05. So it's basically correct. Turn the calibrator on. We'll calibrate output on. No difference. Didn't make any difference to that whatsoever. All right. Check those three again. The calibrate output turned on. No difference. Didn't change anything. Okay, no, no effects on it whatsoever. Um, so let's go and look at Q9. Which is 
is this one. So that's the um, collector of Q9, 0 0.09. Calibrate on and off, no difference. The base is minus 5.9, should be minus 5.6. Calibrate on and off, no difference. And the emitter's grounded anyway. Um, okay, let's look at Q8. Q8 base, minus 6.1, should be minus 6.2. Calibrate on and off. Marginal difference there. Did see a slight difference in you know a couple of millivolts. Uh, that is the collector. 0.15 and the emitter minus 0.68. And again, calibrate on and off. HF2 is saving that as well. That side. Negligible difference. So millivolt maybe. Couple of millivolts, maybe as it's switching, picking up noise. So that is all where I expect it to be. What the hell? So if I scope now on Q10, which is here somewhere, I'm not sure which side it is, it might be this side. That's the wrong one. It's the other side. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm supposed to be getting. Q10. Right, let's show you that. Change to this other view. So this is Q10, the emitter of Q10, just here, which is the sample and hold output. This is what I expected to see when I did the very first test on this thing when it wasn't working. Is this waveform, or something very much like it. Yeah. I need a HP voltmeter. I've got one, in fact I've got two. Or maybe even three actually. I've got an HP 400, I've got the HP 3400A, and I think I've got another one actually. I like another one, maybe, I don't know. I've got a few, but they're out in the other room. I haven't got them handy. But yeah, this is what's supposed to come out of sample held output, which is over here. That's one of the sockets on the back of the unit. I can plug into that. And that is the waveform we should get on a scope. I'll do something like it. This will need adjusting next. I've been tweaking a couple of adjustments trying to pin down what's going on. So, um, yeah, it bloody works again. But why? Mm. <laughs> what changed? So that's currently just with the sweep locked, right? So there's no sweeping. I will unlock the sweep and that will start jittering around again. There we go. That's with the jittering sweep. Weird, because I mean, I've tried this before. I tried um, turning off the sweeping and, and restarting it and doing that sort of stuff multiple times. Whilst I've been trying to diagnose this thing and none of those fixed it then. Oh, mm -mm. Maybe there's a bit of crap in one of the switches and I, I missed it. Maybe. Oh, well, this is working again now. Should I call that a successful repair? Is it a successful repair? It works. Does that qualify? Yeah, I bet if I leave this and come back to it tomorrow, I'll be broken again. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so the only thing I could really see there is that those voltages were out of whack with each other. I mean, the multimeter wasn't really seeing anything, so maybe if we look at it on a scope this time. And, um... See if the scope's seeing much change between calibrate on, calibrate off at the uh, base of Q11. Hey Ian, you're missing all the fun, Ian. Uh, Jonathan, how's it going? Comment before? Don't remember, don't remember seeing a comment before, I think. Yeah, well, I banged it. I'm thinking that's coincidental that banging it was was maybe the key. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to scope it again, and we'll look at this Q11. Let's go top screen again. Yeah. So we'll look at this Q11 here, and we'll see what comes out on the scope. And I'll record it as well with the camera. We'll use the camera to record it. So it's Q11. Um, I'm getting the correct voltage here now. I don't know if I recorded that just now or not. But um, Q11 is um, this one. Is it that one? That one there, 0.05, 13.8, and then 0 0.075, which should be 0 0.05 according to the manual. So that's way closer than it was before. I was nowhere near that before, no matter what I did. So this is now definitely very different. So let's hook up this to the scope, the same pin, the base, and see what we're getting there. Now on the scope there, this is the output for the sample hold. That's what should have been there from the very beginning. So let's hook this up to the Q11 base instead. And that's what we're getting. So let's do that a bit more, bring it out a bit. There we go. So that's what we're getting with the calibrate output turned on. Turn the calibrate output off. Yeah, so the pulse has changed very slightly. There's not much in it. IMS value right now is 76 millivolts. I'll turn the calibrate output on. It's still 76 millivolts. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see it does change slightly having to calibrate output turn on or off at that base yeah but that's just for the feedback circuitry just for reference bloody hell what did I do? What fixed it? Uh, what actually fixed it? Could have been a dodgy trimmer, maybe a dirty trimmer. I haven't touched any of the ones on the bottom board. Like, um. Oh, I'm not your bloody wire again. It's gone off. I need to sort this HDMI cable out. Drive me nuts. Come on, work again. And I'll have to yoke it. I think this is worn out from getting moved around a lot, plugged in and out. Come on. Sometimes rebooting the camera is the best way to get it back. Not this time, apparently. I think I might need a new cable. I'm not sure if there's a cable or the camera that's worn out. One of them is. Come on. I think the camera's crashed. <laughs> it's not even trying to turn on. Oh my god. Right, pop the battery up, I'll do it.
Here we go. Bloody thing. Yeah, the hammer tick. Anyway, so. Change views there. Oh, that. So on this board here, I've got this adjustments there and there. That's the calibrator board uh, adjustment for the calibrator output. That's a transformer which is mentioned in there. Maybe it's that because it is sitting wonky. Maybe there's an issue with the solder joints on that transformer. Maybe, maybe bang it, solved it with that. Could be. Um, down here are the bridge adjustments on 15 volt rail. So that's 15 volt rail adjustment. I haven't touched that. These two are bridge adjustments. I have been playing with those to try and unbalance the bridge for the probe to try and skew the readings down. And it did actually have an effect, but obviously the, it was just a workaround. It wasn't actually the right thing to do. So I've got to recalibrate those now. We've also got the meter response and zero just here. I haven't touched those. And on the top board, which you can't see, the only adjustment I've changed is this one here, that R19. But I did make a note of where it was pointing, I put it back in exactly the same place. And that's one of the ones that helped pull the needle right down at zero point, sorry, point zero three volt range. So I turn that all the way down and then do the balance adjustment on there where it was there and that would bring it down and um, get it so I could see, actually see a needle movement doing testing but that was, a, that was a bit of a bodge. But why is it working? I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery. I don't like outcomes like that. I much prefer to have an actual outcome where I know what I did to fix it. Right now, that's not the situation I'm in. Okay, Peter, thanks for dropping by. Catch you later. Yeah, I've got emails. What's that email? Nothing that I can't wait. Okay, right. So, um, yeah, certainly an interesting experience. Now, I have had other equipment where you get a knock or stuff like that, and it'll be intermittent and play up a little bit and work and. And you know it's just bad, bad cartridge connectors and stuff like that. But on this thing here, I've already taken the, both those balls out, cleaned the edge connectors up with deoxit, and um, rubbing with some paper towel to try and just lightly abrase them because they are gold plated, and then reinserted them right. But even before I pulled those balls out, that was playing up, and doing that with the balls and reseating them didn't fix the problem, and it's been the same ever since with that full scale reading until then. So, yeah. But at least now I know what I should be getting. I've got some reference information about what should be there. So if it does come back, I've got a bit of a direction of going. I know these voltages definitely change. They definitely go out of whack. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the probe output changes, which is one of the interesting bits about that. So that test point was here. Right there. So I was getting, was it point, four, was it 4.6, negative 4.6 volts or something like that I got in at that point, which is smack bang in the middle of that basically, when it was working. But that feedback had changed. 
So, uh, yeah, that feedback to the probe, which comes up here. That feedback there had changed. So maybe this feedback being very different affected the output and the response from that bridge. I didn't bang the probe. The probe was stationary, so that wasn't what got banged. It's purely a circuit board and that, well, that cage that dropped. So it could be either of those two boards, which makes me think that transformer. Don't know. But things seem to be working. I don't know. It's just weird. I. Meh. <laughs> Oh well, um, well, it's near midnight here now. Well, time goes quickly when you're having fun. Now, do I risk trying to force it to fail? Do I get in there with some free spray and see if I can make it fault? I think it's probably the impact which is what changed the uh, situation. Or is when I tied that sweeping signal down to ground. Because I banged the cage, I was still getting a full scale reading. But I don't know if I had the calibrate button in or out or not. If the calibrate button was in, it would have been full scale reading. Anyway, um, so that's sweeping output. Let's find it again. It's down here somewhere. So I do actually look at these waveforms that are coming from the actual sweep system because I never got that far because I assumed, dangerous thing to do, that it's working correctly. Because it appeared to be. Um, so that is uh, R29, that's the idea from Q6. That's the one I linked there, R29. This Q6, R29, that junction there is what I pulled to ground. So could pulling that to ground be causing that to happen? That's the same in the triangle generator, which is part of the... Th the triangle generator generates the entire sweep. Um, the sawtooth generates the waveform, like the, the 20 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz waveform. And the triangle generator is one that sweeps between the frequencies. Um, and it actually says, stop shutting out to ground. So what is that trace there, or that line there going to? So it's directly beneath the thick one. Um, that one there is it? C7. A bit hard to do with these broken up diagrams. C7. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to ground anyway. So that transistor's pulling to ground. So all we're doing is bypassing the transistor and forcing it to be basically fully on. So that wouldn't really change anything, would it? Simulate the bang again. Yeah, opposite direction, I have to bang upwards instead of downwards this time. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Hmm. Oh well, it's working. I need to sit down now and actually um, go through the adjustment procedure and fix those adjustments I'll tweet and see if they're going to be right. I'm going to give it a little bit of off time and see if it will come back on and still work properly. <laughs> but yeah, it's I don't know, it's weird because it was working originally, 
well, mostly working, it seemed to be basically what it's doing now. And I cleaned the buttons, cause, or switches, because they were playing up, but they weren't giving full scale readings and had been a little bit glitchy. And because the open frame, so it's like oh, dirt and stuff, and oxidization can get in there quite easily, so clean it with the oxid. Then I tried to probe on my AWG to generate a signal to test the accuracy and the actual meter movement and stuff like that because it was actually having issues with the meter sticking originally. And it's at that point when I was trying to do that testing to see if the meter would respond correctly to the AWG to see if it's actually reading the correct levels when I noticed it's, it's doing full scale and that was the end of it. So, I don't know. Could have been some debris in the switches floating around? Possibly. Maybe me bang it as just dislodge something. Tin whiskers? I don't know. Um. don't know, I haven't really come across that on this sort of era of equipment. I haven't really come across it. Um, yeah, I don't know. There could be a bit of crappy floating around the switches and it's shorting the switches out. Or causing a leakage in the switches. Because I did test the switches what I thought was thoroughly. Um, I could have missed something. I was just probing on the switches and activating the switches manually and checking for continuity and breaking you know open and closing a lot of switches maybe I missed something because I was just doing diode mode checking for continuity you know beeping maybe if there's a leakage issue it may not have shown up it could have been enough to throw it could there be something floating around in there could it be a bad solder joint possibly but the soldering on these things are always really good when they remember to solder them now I actually had well, this is the third piece of equipment, I think. Yeah, I think this is probably the third thing from HP I've had from this kind of era, 60s, 70s kind of era, where I've had components which aren't soldered. I picked up a, um, a switch unit. It's got like a bunch of internal relays, and it's got, I think, it's six buttons on the front, I think it was. And you, and it's, you push a button, it's led to the relay, so you can switch in bits of gear and test jigs and stuff like that, that's what it's for. Put it out quite cheap, I thought it'd be interesting to look at. And I found it had a indicator which never worked, or wasn't working at least. And I found that the wiring wasn't soldered on the switch, the switch had never been soldered. It was completely virgin, no solder on that switch at all. And so I soldered it and that fixed it. <laughs> it's like it's always been faulty its entire life. And that is from the sixties. Um, I've had something else which had something not soldered. I can't remember what it was now. Another HP piece of gear. It's missing solder joint. And then this has got a missing solder joint in the probe. So, yeah. It happens. Anyway. It's midnight. I should probably think about going to bed. I was tempted to do a live stream tomorrow, but I've done it now. Should I do another one in eight hours' time? Mm, don't know. Maybe. Should I do a live stream in eight hours? Find something else to play with. Maybe play with this some more. <laughs> See if it's broken again. Hmm. All right. I'm going to call it night. I'm going to go to bed, and um, I may or may not live stream tomorrow. I have to think about it. I'll have a sleep. See what I feel like when I wake up in the morning. Watch out for the impromptu live stream in the morning, if there is one, maybe. So, thanks for dropping by, and um, what a weird thing to happen. <laughs>